Christian Parenting. Welcome to the Christian Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Steph Thurling. I'm the Executive Director of Christian Parenting, a mom of three, and I am so glad that you're here. This is a place where you can bring your real self, no matter what that looks like today, and be given the space, resources, and encouragement you need to set aside perfection and grow into the perfectly imperfect parent God made you to be. loving summer and definitely don't want to rush this time, but fall is going to be here before we know it. And as you start to think about back to school, I want to encourage you to think about how you can be praying for your kids this school year. It's so easy to get caught up in the daily tasks of parenting, like getting school supplies, coordinating the schedules, doing laundry, making snacks, and then making even more snacks. But as Christian parents, it's important to remember the big picture. The one thing that truly matters is teaching our kids to know, love, follow, and share Jesus. I am so excited to tell you that the Christian Parenting 2024-2025 Prayer Journal is now available. A Life of Faith, Knowing, Loving, Following, and Sharing Jesus is a prayer journal from Christian Parenting that was created just for you. This journal will guide you in praying over your kids every week of the school year. Together, we will pray that our children will know Jesus as their Savior, love Him with their hearts, minds, and strength, follow Him faithfully through their entire lives, and boldly share His good news with others. Thousands of parents use this journal every year. So join us as together we pray that our kids will live a full life of faith. You can visit cpgive.org to request your school year prayer journal, A Life of Faith. Again, that's cpgive.org to request your copy of A Life of Faith today. And it is more than just a journal. You can also listen to Pardon the Mess podcast each Monday to listen to guided prayer and reflection that follows along. So go request your copy today. Hey friends, today I am joined by another one of our Christian Parenting Podcast Network podcast hosts, Jenna Griffith. Jenna hosts the Joyful Podcast, which is one of our newer shows, and she is just such a calming, gentle, enjoyable person to talk to. You will leave this conversation feeling so encouraged in your parenting. Today, Jenna shares her journey as a mom and the importance of finding joy in every season of motherhood. She emphasizes the need to rely on God as the source of joy and encourages mom to put blinders on and focus on the good in their lives, documenting and celebrating the moments of joy because there are a lot of them. She also addresses the cultural pressures and lies that moms often face, such as comparison on social media and the belief that this season of motherhood is just not as important as others. I hope that you love this conversation with Jenna. Hi, Jenna. How are you? Hi, I'm good. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you on. You are one of our newer hosts on the Christian Parenting Podcast Network, so I'm excited for people just to get to know you and get to hear about your podcast and your heart for moms and all of the things about you. So I think it's going to be really fun. Yes, love it. I'm excited. Yeah, and I just like to dive right in. Yeah. So I first, I just want you to tell us about who you are. Tell us about what you do, who your family is, and then can you describe your family in one word or phrase? Oh my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so I'm Jenna. I, um, my husband and I have been together since I was 18. Um, and we have three kids. Um, Miles, who is, five. He might be six by the time this comes out. Um, (laughs) He's almost six. Uh, Birdie, she's four. And then we have Archer, who's two and a half. Um, And they are just so much fun. And I am a stay-at-home mom slash podcasting mom slash homeschooling mom. (laughs) Wear lots of hats. Um, And it's it's so fun. Um, And yeah, that's, that's when we... My husband works from home. I work from home. And so we're we're very home-centered and, and we love that. We love that, you know, God has blessed us with the ability to just be together as much as possible. Um, motherhood is kind of one of those things that I, I'm one of those people that it was always my dream to be a mom. I always wanted to be a mom. You know, when people ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would say I wanted to be a mom. Um, and so mm-hmm. it's truly just the greatest blessing to be able to be living in that dream. Um, so yeah. And then I, uh, in October of 2020, I started the Joy Filled podcast. 
Um, and that's just been a really, for the past few years, a really beautiful space to um, just encourage and equip moms and kind of just link arms with other moms in the same season as me, you know, raising littles, having babies, doing all the things, just um, linking arms and, and doing it together and just, you know, reminding them that, you know, you're not alone in this and and there is joy here and this season is not to be wasted and it's um, it's a beautiful, appointed, divine season in our lives and God has so much for us here in this season. And so, so yeah, that's, that's a little about me, but gosh, describing my family in, in one word or phrase, I don't know if I've ever been asked to do that. And that sounds very, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Gosh, cause we're all so different, but so similar, you know? And so it's hard to, it's hard to lump us all into one phrase, but I would say that we are full of life is a great phrase to describe our family and also our home and our life in this, you know, in this season, our family in this season of our life. You know, we've got three young, very loud kids. (laughs) And so full of life is how I would describe us if I had, if I had to choose, but, you know, ask me in 10 years and I'll probably say something different. (laughs) Well, hopefully you do say something different in 10 years, right? Like, yeah. As your family grows and changes, but man, full of life, two, four, and six, that is like full of life, full of life, (laughs) all the life, (laughs) all the life. Oh man, that's a good one. Okay. So the other question that I ask everyone to get us going is what is one thing you want every parent to know? Um, I think that my favorite thing to remind parents of is that, um, you know, you'll never be a perfect parent, but you are the perfect parent for your kids. And there are no accidents. You didn't accidentally have a baby. You didn't, you know, you didn't have a whoopsie. Like God (laughs) ordained your children for you and you for your children. And it's a divine calling. And it's, you know, his, his hand was in it from long before you ever planned it or didn't plan to have your kids. And so that's what I always just like to remind parents of is that, you know, you are not a perfect parent, but you are exactly the parent that your kids need. And, you know, somebody else, I can't raise your kids the way that God needs your kids to be raised because he gave you to them and he gave them to you and, Mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. You know, you can't raise my kids the way that they need to be raised because I'm divinely appointed for them. And so, I think that perspective really just helps kind of clear out the noise and the comparison that happens in parenthood. So, um, gosh, there's so many things that I, I mean, like we could sit all day and talk about all the things I love for parents to know, but that's probably my favorite one. Well, the good thing is we get like 30 ish minutes. To right. Do just true. That. true. <laughs> just keep going. You don't have to stop. Um, but tell us, let's, I want to hear more of those things, but tell us first, like about your podcast, about Joyful, like how did it come to be? Why did you decide in this really busy season of having babies, I'm going to start a podcast? (laughs) Yeah, it really, it doesn't make sense, does it? When you think about that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I, after, after I had my first, I was, I, I struggled with postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety um, and postpartum anger. And it was all undiagnosed, kind of undetected. And so I didn't really know that that's what I was experiencing. I just thought that that was normal postpartum behavior and normal for postpartum. And like, this is just how it is. Um, and so I really struggled in that first year after having my first baby. But to pile on to that, um, my older two kids are 16 months apart. So I got pregnant with our second while I was still kind of in the middle of that postpartum struggle. And so to add on to that, a pregnancy, it was just a really, it was a really hard season of, of my life. But then when my daughter was born, um, I really, you know, I, I always describe her the day she was born. It was, you know, middle, her birthday's November 21st. So it was like middle of November in the Pacific Northwest, which is, if you don't know winter in the Pacific Northwest, it is very gloomy, very cloudy. We don't see the sun for months. Um, but it was a sunny November day when she was born and it was, she was born in the morning. And so the sun was just shining 
like it was like warm sun shining onto my hospital bed as I was having her. And I, it was so uncharacteristic. So I'm un, un, out of the ordinary for November, for a November morning to be so sunny. And it was, I truly feel that God really just healed me in through having her healed me of all of the, um, the struggle that I had faced um, previously. And I, when I was pregnant with her, I had had somebody say to me like, Hey, I just, it was after like a church event and she was a friend of mine who kind of knew what I had walked through. And she, and she said, I just want you to know, um, you're not gonna, you're not gonna experience what you experience. Like this is going to be a redeeming experience for you. And I was like, I received that. Amen. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, so yeah, once after I had her and I kind of felt like the fog was lifted from my eyes and I was experiencing postpartum and the joy of postpartum and the joy of having a baby for the first time. And, and I really felt like God, um, you know, redeemed all of the broken pieces that I had felt that I had grieved, that I had felt like I missed out on, um, things that had happened, you know, during my delivery and, and, and after that I felt, you know, were, were robbed from me and taken from my first experience. And, um, he just redeemed it tenfold with my postpartum experience with her. And, and I really started to realize, and he really started to speak to me that like, one, I realized, you know, the depths of depression and anxiety that I was in and how not normal it was. Um, and and also, you know, I realized like more people need to be talking about this and more people need to be, you know, open about this and really just like not waiting until what I felt like is everybody waits until they're 10 years down the road to talk about this season of life. Everybody waits till they're like a seasoned, experienced mom to talk about raising how to raise kids in the little years. And I'm not here to tell you how to raise kids, but I am here to encourage you as a mom. And um and so it was through that that I kind of, you know, started having these ideas of, you know, maybe what could I do? Like I just feel like I want to like I don't want to wait until I'm out of this season. I want I want to come alongside people in the same season as them. And so then, you know, we were, my husband and I, we would talk about different things and, and, you know, I I had talked about like, maybe I could share birth stories. Like maybe that would be fun. Maybe we could just like have people come on and share their birth stories. Um, and he's like, maybe you should start a podcast. And I was like, what? A podcast? (laughs) At that time, I thought that like only celebrities had podcasts. I was like, I couldn't even do that. Like, I'm not even allowed. Like, don't you have to be like approved for the podcast? (laughs) Um, Like to have one. (laughs) And, um, and so then it was like, okay, well, yeah, maybe I could start a podcast. And then we started talking about these different ideas. And I just kept coming back to this idea of like, I just, I want to help moms experience joy right here. I don't want them to feel like they have to wait because there's such a culture of like, oh, you know, when, when my kids are, you know, out of diapers, I'll be able to breathe. Or when you fill in the blank, I'll be able to rest or I'll be able to whatever. And I just really felt like I wanted to combat that and fight against that and say, no, like we can have all the things right now we can have joy. We can have peace. We can feel rest even when we're not, even when we're tired, we can feel at rest right now because of Jesus and because of, of his spirit coming alongside us and helping us. And so, so that's kind of how that was born. Um, and I know it was like, yeah, it's not, it's a crazy season of life to start something like a podcast, but um, it just, I really felt like it was just, I said from the beginning, like, I just want it to be a ministry and I just want to encourage moms, other moms like me who have maybe, who walked through what I walked through and, um, you know, the, felt the way I felt, feeling very lonely and isolated and like nobody else is experiencing this when, you know, uh, the reality is so many people experience similar stories. And so it started really wanting to talk to, you know, that postpartum, like really, early motherhood and it's evolved since then but the the core value is the same the core um vision is the same you know to just come alongside moms and encourage them and point them to Jesus and you know walk with Christ together um is really the heart of it so 
Hey guys, so I want to encourage you today that you can build your kid's faith in 30 seconds a day. A big faith is possible through little habits. As Christian parents, we want our kids to know God, but the task of discipling them seems like a daunting one because parenting is hard. We're busy, we're tired, and we often feel unequipped. It feels like most of the time our kids aren't all that interested or can't sit still long enough for us to read the Bible anyway. But in Little Habits, Big Faith, Christy Thomas delivers simple yet profound ways that you can help your kids connect with God. You will discover how to overcome common struggles, implement easy practices that fit your unique kids, and change your family's faith culture. You can grow your family's faith each day with sustainable and practical habits. So you can learn more and get your copy of Little Habits, Big Faith at navpress.com. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. I love their heart for encouraging moms, especially in those early years. And I like that you are in it. So you're saying me too. Like I'm there too. Not the like expert who wrote all the books, but like I'm here too. Yeah. I remember when I had my first, we were the first by a few years to have kids. And I struggled with postpartum depression and anxiety in a big way. And I didn't know it. I just kind of thought it was a miserable season. Yeah. Yeah. And then same when I had my second, my friends were having their first and I watched them like within weeks and I watched them in their postpartum. And I was like, these things are not, they're not the same in like an extreme way where this isn't normal. And I had a nursing thing where nursing gave me really, really bad anxiety. Mm. It was a hormonal thing, which made it even worse. I mean, there were like so many things to navigate and I felt like I was the only one and there weren't really that many podcasts and things like that out at the time. And so I just think it's so important because that sense of community and that sense of shared experience It's just so transformative for moms who are trying to figure out, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. Like, it's scary enough when someone just gives you a baby. But then if you (laughs) have any sort of postpartum issues, I mean, we're just all confused. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, One of my favorite things to say is in it with you. That's one of my, that's one of my little phrases that I say often. And, and it, that's really, it really just portrayed, like, like what you say, you know, it's like, I'm in it with you. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you, you know, I get asked a lot for like specific parenting episodes or specific like episodes on discipline or episodes on, you know, things like that. And I'm like, probably, probably won't talk about that because I just, you know, go, there's other podcasts for that and they're the experts and they're trained and, and they can give you, you know, all the information. And I'm just here to encourage and I'm here to say, Hey, you're not alone. I know you thought you were alone in this, but Hey, you're not, you're not the only one that, you know, experiences comparison. You're not the only one that, you know, feels guilty for sometimes scrolling too long on Instagram. You're not the only one that, you know, struggled with postpartum depression and wrestled with that and what that looks like as a Christian. You're not the only, you know, I could go on and on, but you're not the only one. Um, And that's time and time again, what I hear um, is so refreshing is just that, you know, I thought that I would, I get so many messages. I thought that I was the only one that felt that way. And then you said that, and I just, you know, I, you were speaking straight to me. I'm like, I know. Cause I was speaking to me. Cause we all like, <laughs> we're, we get, we think that we're, we're in our own little worlds, but really it's like motherhood is such a universal. There's, there are things about it that is so universal that we don't realize until we start to step out and share our stories. And we realize like, oh, hey, me too. Oh, hey, I like, I feel the shame is lifted because I know that I'm not alone anymore. So, so yeah, it's really, it's been a really beautiful thing to experience. 
What are some of those like cultural pressures or lies that you feel like a lot of moms experience? I think a big one is, um, and I don't know what where you would categorize this, but I think a big one that especially Christian moms uh, we have to overcome is kind of this like mommy wine culture that's that's really big on mm-hmm. social media where like and it's a big temptation um, to just kind of like complain about our kids and complain about our family and complain about our role as mothers, whatever that looks like, you know, whether that's staying home or working or somewhere in between, you know, we all still wear that role. Um, and so I think that's a big one, you know, combating that and, and feeling brave enough to actually like, there's been so many times when I've talked to people who are like, you gave me permission to enjoy this. And I'm like, that's Mm. so sad that our culture is just so bent on all the worst parts. And it's not to negate that there are hard parts, but like, if you are just so focused on everything going wrong, you are missing so much about the beauty and the joy in this season. And I'm like, you guys, kids are so fun. Like we get to hang out with these little people all day and actually they're really fun and and they're really cool if you just take time to get to know them as people and, and see them as people. And so I think that's a big one that, you know, fighting that culture in your own heart and that, that kind of mentality in your own heart. Um, obviously social media plays such a big role in, you know, guilt and shame and comparison and insecurity. I just did an episode about this, but it's like, it plays such a huge role in, you know, it's so hard for, for moms today to like just feel confident in the decision they make because they make a deci- we make a decision and then we go on social media and we see 10 other opinions about 10 other ways to do it like that's something that really I experienced a lot my first year of motherhood was I was I would like google everything because I had anxiety mm-hmm. and I was, you know, a brand new mom and so I would google everything and I would get every single every opinion and I just felt like it was just created this storm in my mind of like, I was never at peace (laughs) with what I was doing. And there was always like something telling me no matter what I was doing, I was doing it wrong. Or no matter what I was doing, it was the wrong choice. And so then when I had my daughter, I made the decision. I was like, I'm not Googling anything. Like, I'm just going to figure this out. I'm going to like, I'm going to trust my intuition that God gave me. He made me to be a mother. I'm going to lean into that. I'm going to like trust the Holy Spirit to just guide me. And that was one of the best things that I could have ever done for myself in that season was like lay off Google, <laughs> lay off the mommy blogs and just let it like you will figure it out. So that's another one too is social media just plays such a huge um a huge role in in the comparison and the insecurity, I think, and second guessing ourselves as moms. Um, and yeah, I think a lie that we a lie that a lot of us have to face is again that just that lie that like this season is not as important as you know maybe before you had kids and you had a career or not as important as after your kids are grown and you'll be able to quote unquote, go back to your normal life. Like, and and so that's really just my heart is like, what does God have for us right here? Cause there is, there, there are no accidents. There are no wasted seasons with God. And so what does he have for you right here? Cause I don't believe that he would put you in a, he would put something in your hands for you to just, for it to just be wasted or for you to just like give the bare minimum. And so that's a big lie too. You know, I always say like your ministry is where your feet are and where your feet are is not by accident. Like God placed you where your feet are. Even if you think you had something to do with it, you actually didn't like, you're not more powerful than God. (laughs) And so uh, your ministry is where your feet are. Your ministry is what's in your hands. And so, um, so I think that's, that's a big lie too. It's just that lie of like, it's, it's whatever, or it's not, this isn't like this is just an in-between between your, your purpose or between your callings, you know, and it's not a calling or it's not purposeful. Um, so yeah, those are just a few. (laughs) There's just so much goodness in every stage of Mm -hmm. like the little kids are so fun. They are so exhausting. Yes. So hands-on and you just get so touched out and there's so much like training to do, you Mm -hmm. know, 
And that is all true, but they're so fun and they have the cute little hand dimples and yes. the wrist wrinkles, you know, yes. they're so sweet. And I just like found my son's old little like blanket that he used to fall asleep rubbing his face. And I was like, oh my goodness, I miss those little kids, but I love the stage I'm in now. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the like preteen years with my oldest and my daughter is she's only eight, but she, she thinks she's 18. So there's like a lot of stuff going on in this season too. Mm -hmm. People always talk about the preteens and how hard that is. And like, I mean, it's hard and he's hormonal and our schedules are insane, but it's so fun that that I can't like, there's nothing to hate about it. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's not hard, but there's nothing to hate about it. And then I can't wait to see what they do later in life. Like I always say, I can't wait. Yeah, and I'm not rushing time, but like I cannot wait to see what my kids do yeah. as adults. And like, I think it really all comes back to you know because I think it's easy to hear that and go like, well, if you only knew my situation, mm-hmm. I think it really mm-hmm. just comes back to your perspective on it. And you know, because it's like yeah. you should feel that way in every season. Like you should feel. I feel that way. I feel the same way. I feel. I felt. You know, when my kids were itty bitty babies, that I do now. That you know, my oldest is he's like moving out of toddlerhood and into like being a little boy. And I'm like, Oh, mm-hmm. I miss you when you were like a little toddler, a little squishy little boy, but you're so fun. Like seeing who you are as a, you know, as a six year old, seeing like your brain and what you care about and the things that get you excited, like seeing, starting to see who they're developing into as their own person is really, really fun too. And so it just is the perspective of like, there is hard in every season yeah. and there is mm-hmm. good in every season. So what are we looking at? You know, what are we focusing yes. on? Are we fixing our eyes on what is good and true and, you know, pure and noble and like the Bible tells us to do, you know? So that's what I just always come back to is like, it really does come back to your perspective and what you're, what you're choosing to fix your eyes on. Um, yeah. And I just, I'm like, if I'm going to, there's always going to be hard and good. So I'm just choosing to focus on the good and it hasn't steered me wrong yet. <laughs> right. And I mean, like, do not get me wrong. There are some parts of oh, raising for sure. a preteen that are just like, I want to pull my hair out yeah. and I just don't, I don't understand, but it is true. It's like, this is just the, the perspective of knowing like this is a season mm-hmm. and I can do this well and like grow my kids into the next season. Mm-hmm. And then I'll see the fruit. Like you see the fruit of, every past season in the new season. And that's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that I, I always look back on, you know, my first, that first postpartum experience that I talked about. And I, you know, I look back with such grace on myself then, but I also, I'm like, I just wish I would have really grasped how short the season is. Cause I think that that would have helped me, you know, be able to just quiet my mind and, and, be more present and not because I think that the anxiety and the depression, some of it was hormonal, but some of it was circumstantial too. I was very like, um, just very out of sorts. And, um, and so I look back and I'm like, gosh, if I would have known just how short the season is with a newborn, um, cause you know, I, I would spiral and feel like, I haven't gotten sleep. I'm never going to sleep again. Oh my gosh, this is it's like all consuming. And it does feel all consuming and it's so hard and it's so exhausting and you are just completely fatigued. Um, but you know, I've been able to carry that that perspective into my other, you know, postpartum experiences and really just being able to say it truly is just a season and it goes by so fast. Um, yeah. and so that's that perspective is really important I think to remember is like in everything it is a short season and that it's a short season that we get them in our homes at all. And it's an even shorter season that we get them, you know, at this age and at this stage. And, and so we take, we take the good with the hard and we, you know, just try to enjoy all of it. Yeah. I mean, you learn from every season too, mm-hmm. right? Like you're supposed to get better at yes. painting as yeah. you get older. Like, yeah. You know, you get every year you get more experience, just yes. like any other job. Yep. You get better as you do it more. But for people who are listening and are like, that's great, guys. You, again, don't know my kid. You don't know my circumstance. You don't know my family. What encouragement or advice would you have for those people who are just finding a hard, having a hard time finding joy right now? Um, I would say, first and foremost, press into the Lord because that is your only – if you are trying to find joy in your circumstance, if you're trying, if you're, if you're trying to make your kids your source of joy – 
um, that's going to fail you every time. You know, if you're trying to make your, your, whatever job you have, whether it's motherhood or something else, if you're trying to make that your source of joy, that will fail you every time. Um, and I think that's the really, it's the really groundbreaking and, you know, kind of wow thing about joy is that it's not like happiness. It's not a feeling. It's not something fleeting that will come and go. It's a, it's a deep, you know, it's a deep feeling. It's not a feeling. It's a deep thing that happens in our souls when we place our trust in Jesus. And so first and foremost, I would say, you know, are you, are you spending time with the Lord? Are you in your word? Are you, you know, inviting the Holy Spirit into your day, into, you know, every, every day, into every moment? Are you, you know, are you really making space for him in your life? Um, Because I will say it was when I started to do those kinds of things really intentionally, you know, in the morning pray and actually verbally invite the Holy Spirit into our home, into this day, come praying, come be with us today, walk with us today, help us today. Um, Rather than just, you know, letting the days run into each other without praying that prayer. Um, It was when I started to be intentional about that, that I really started to be able to experience joy no matter their circumstances. So that's probably the the biggest thing that I would say is, you know, your circumstance is not going to be the thing that brings you joy. Um, your your kids are not going to be the thing that are your source of joy. Um, so, you know, take the pressure off of them. Let them off the hook. Um, let your family off the hook for being your source of joy and go to Jesus because he's the only one that can handle being your source of joy. And he's the only one that can shoulder that weight of being your source of joy. Um, and then I would say another thing that really helped me, you know, when I was walking through a really hard season is to just kind of put blinders on. You know, sometimes we can we can compare and we can we look around at, you know, everybody else's highlight reels or at what everybody else presents. You know, we see the family coming into church on Sunday and they're all matching and they're all happy, but we don't really know what happened Monday through Saturday. Um and but we compare ourselves to that snapshot. You know, we compare our we compare our whole mess to other families you know, snapshots that they show us. And so I would just say put blinders on and really become almost obsessed with just finding all the good right where you're at um, and finding the joy right where you're at. You know, I call it going on a joy hunt. And it just, it's like choosing to see every good thing. And and when you when you look for the good, you'll find it. And it can be small things. It can be big things. You know, this morning, my joy hunt was we have a family of little quail that hang out around our house and they just had babies. And so we get to watch their little, we get to watch the two mom and dad quail and their little babies walk around our yard. And it's so stinking cute. And my kids love it. So it's like little things like that. that and I just choose to see those little things that just spark a little bit of joy in my heart. And I, I see them as, you know, not just, it's easy to see those things and let it pass, but I choose to stop and I see them as gifts from God. And um, because, you know, he is, he is all around us. We just have to slow down uh, long enough to see his hand and his gifts. And so, you know, become obsessed with just finding the good in your life and writing it down or documenting it. I love to document with like videos and pictures so that you can look back and say like, this was a really hard season, but wow, look at all the good that I was able to find. Um, and I think the more that you do that, you know, the more that you go to Jesus as your source of joy and the more that you just make it your mission to live with blinders on and not, you know, not let the lies of the enemy creep in and, and you know, with the comparison and insecurity and all of that, but just put blinders on and focus on the good that's happening amidst the hard the more that you'll see your um, your perception of your circumstance begin to change. Because your circumstance might not change, but you can change your mind about it. And you can change how you feel about it. Um, so that's what I would say. I always tell my kids happiness is a choice. Yes. And I know that's kind of like a blanket statement. And some things are out of our control. And there are some situations that are just really, really hard. And there's real depression and anxiety. Mm-hmm. So. All that aside, yeah, (laughs) I just tell you know when they're just choosing to be cranky about a situation, 
I just am always saying like, you can choose to be cranky or you can choose to be happy and to see good in this. Yeah. We have one of our kids. That's up to you. I'm like, I can't make you do it. Yep. (laughs) Like that's on you. Yeah. One of our kids right now is really bent on finding all the negative in, you know, Mm -hmm. he'll come to us with a problem and we'll give him solutions or ideas and then he'll tell us all the reasons why that won't work or all the reasons why he can't or all the, you know, and my husband has started saying, you know, he kind of will interrupt and say, joy is everywhere. Joy is everywhere. Joy is everywhere. (laughs) And I didn't like, I didn't prompt that at all. That was completely my husband, like just started doing that. And I was like, you're right. Joy is everywhere. And so now, you know, that's a running, like, it's a thing in our family that we say all the time. Like anytime somebody starts to, you know, run their list of negative things or run their list of why things can't work out, we just stop and we say joy is everywhere. And it's kind of like, you can, you can choose for for a six-year-old, you know, it's like, you can choose to have fun or you can choose to complain about all the reasons why you can't have fun. (laughs) Like joy is everywhere. Go find it. I, so, yeah. I have a couple kids who do that, but they will do it when they're hungry. Like, yeah. my husband gets very hangry. If I get hangry, watch out. But it's like very mm-hmm. not often that it happens. But my kids get hangry very easily. And I can always tell when they're hangry because they'll be doing the same thing, complaining. And I'll offer them a solution. They're like, no, and here's why. Here's why. I'm here's like, here's why a sandwich is terrible. Is this what you really needed? No, I'm like, <laughs> would you like a beef stick yeah. or like a protein bar? Yes. And then they come back and they're just perfectly fine. And I'm like, you needed food. There it was. There it was. <laughs> There's also that. <laughs> Joy is everywhere. Eat a snack. <laughs> Snacks are also everywhere in this house. They're readily accessible for you. Go get a snack. <laughs> Preferably something that will make you full. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jenna, this was lovely. I would love for you to share kind of where people can connect with you and listen to your podcast so that they can continue to hear more from you. Yeah. Well, you can find me at the Joyfield Podcast, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And then I'm on Instagram at Jenna Marie Griffith. And the podcast page is Joyfield Podcast. So you can find me there too. Perfect. I'll put that in show notes that is easy for everyone to find. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me, Jenna. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us today. It's always so fun to spend time with our podcast hosts. You can learn more about the Christian Parenting Podcast Network at christianparenting.org. We have shows for all seasons and phases of parenting, and we have great shows for kids too. So definitely go check it out. I loved Jenna's encouragement to rely on God as the source of joy in every season of motherhood. So much goodness there. May God bless you this week, and may you depend on Him for your joy, knowing that joy is not situational, but it is found in Jesus. May you have confidence in your parenting because you are His child, chosen to be the parents of your children for a reason, and He will give you all that you need, including joy. Thank you so much for listening to the Christian Parenting Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And if you love this podcast, would you please consider leaving a review and sharing it with a friend? This is the best way to reach more people and encourage even more parents. Christian Parenting is a donor-funded ministry, and we rely on friends like you to keep podcasts like this going. So to find out more about Christian Parenting and to make a donation, head over to christianparenting.org or at christianparenting underscore org on Instagram. Thank you again. See you next week. America, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By honoring your sacred vocation of education, you impact your family, your friends, and your community. At Grand Canyon University, our online bachelor's, master's, and doctoral education degree programs allow you to balance online coursework with observational and hands-on experience in the field. Find your purpose at GCU. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu.